Hello everyone, this is Displace. The War Within pre-patch launched late last night and with it comes a lot of new things. So I want to take some time today to highlight everything that is in the pre-patch from warbands, skywriting, a new event, and more. So if you want more regular War Within updates, please be sure to subscribe. With that said, let's dive right in. Probably one of the biggest updates and best received to War Within, which is available in the pre-patch, is Warbands. So with Warbands, players can enjoy account-wide progression with all the characters in their Battle.net account, regardless of faction. So this includes things like Renown, a Warband Bank, Achievements, and more. This starts from a brand new character login screen. So from this new screen, not only can you see all of the characters in your warband, which are listed as your favorites, but you see the entire list of your characters, regardless of what realm they're on. Now, realms do still exist, but like as, for example, this person's on Shuhalo, and then this person is on Thrall. And as you hover over, you can see different things like... Uh, if there is gear updates available, their professions, their spec, and where they are. So if you want to actually change your warband characters, it's as easy as just dragging them up. So I'm going to go down here. I want to bring him up and replace this rogue right here. And then I'm going to also replace my... Shaman with my Druid. And there you go. Now all these people are in the Warband and they will start sharing everything together. You also get access to a new tab in your bank for your Warband characters. So anything that you place inside this tab, all of your Warband characters will have access to it. So I know in previous expansions, I would have to mail crafting materials to my alts. Now, I can just place those items in the Warband tab and not have to worry about the mail. And what's really awesome about the Warband Bank is that it has multiple tabs, which will allow you to store quite a bit of stuff for all of your characters to use. The tabs, however, do come with a cost, and like guild tabs, you have to pay for each one. So it's going to take a little over 3 million gold to buy all five tabs. The first one is a measly 1,000 gold, and the fifth tab is 2.5 million gold. So back in Classic, I used to have this bank tune that I would mail all of my spare stuff to. Then I created a guild, specifically to store all my crap. I mean, I mean stuff. It, it's all important stuff. Now we have Warband Banks. It makes things a whole lot easier to manage. This is going to be really helpful if you have tunes that are double gatherers or double crafters. So like one of my characters is a blacksmith and an engineer and rely on another tune to do all of the farming. So that farming tune can just dump everything into the warband bank. So I have an easy central place for my other character to retrieve all the mats they need. You can also share gold between characters within the warband bank. So just deposit gold into the warband bank and any character that has access to it will be able to withdraw it for use. Another feature of your Warband is gear that you can share between characters. So it's kind of like bind on account gear, but it's Warbound until equipped. So it's only available to be used by characters in your Warband. Once it's equipped, it does become Soulbound. So this is going to allow you to be able to farm some gear for your alts while leveling up playing your main. There are plans to have Warbound until equipped gear available within raids, dungeons and delves so gearing up your alts is going to be super easy if you're like a lot of players you're going to be transmogging your gear and up until now you had to actually be able to equip the gear in order to add it to your collection now regardless of your character's ability to equip the gear any item picked up will be added to your collection automatically so as you can see i'm running through nax on my mage and all of the plate gear that I'm looting from the bosses is automatically getting added to my appearance collection. 
currently the only limitation to this is class specific gear or tokens those will not be able to be learned however they are now warbound so you can just stick them in the bank or one of your other characters to pick up and learn there's also a change to rolling for gear in raids so any gear that you have not collected yet will have a transmog option to roll on it rather than the greed and the transmog roll has a higher priority than greed also if you roll transmog your roll will have a higher priority if your character can equip the item so for example if two players roll transmog on say a cloth chest piece and one player is a warrior and the other player is a priest the priest's roll will have a higher priority than the warriors There are a lot of achievements right now that are account-wide unlocks, and in the past you've had to complete them on a single character. For the War Within, they're getting rid of the character-based achievement scores and are moving it to a Warband achievement score. So as you can see on my screen, both my DK and my Evoker have the actual same amount of achievement points because they're in the same Warband. So this means that you can actually start working on an achievement on one character and finish it on another character in your warband. This not only streamlines a lot of the achievements, but also shows Blizzard's push to be alt friendly. As a side note, there is going to be some achievements that are character specific, but this is looking to be an exception rather than the rule. Like achievements, reputation is also becoming warbound, which means that when you earn renown or rep on one, it transfers to the entire warband. Again, like achievements, not all reputation will be shared between warband characters. So if you take a look at some of the older stuff, this is not actually warbound yet, right? It doesn't say that it's warbound, it's just regular reputation. However, if you take a look at your Dragon Isles renown, this actually shows warband reputation and so you can continue to contribute regardless of what warband character you're on and the last thing for warbands is currency sharing so unlike the other warband features where everything is is shared between characters currency works a bit differently so instead of sharing all of your currency together you can actually transfer your currency to another character so for example if you had some time warp badges and one character had 4,000 and another character had 1,000, you can send the, the 1,000 over to the other character and give them enough to buy that mount that you've been looking for. So Blizzard stated that the reason that you have to transfer currency is so that you don't accidentally spend it on the wrong character. So the act of transferring it makes you more conscious about who's going to be actually spending it. So in order to transfer currency, you just log into the character you want to receive the currency on, right? So I'm on my DK, going to go to the character screen, going to go to the currency, and all of a sudden here I have all of these currencies. Now, if you notice some of these have this little emblem. That means that it's warband transferable, right? So if I click on this, I have a little transfer button, but Emerald Dewdrops, I can't transfer. Right, so taking that time warp badge example in, right, I click time warp badge, I click the transfer button, and this is the character that I want the currency on, right? So I have currently almost 6,000 time warp badges here. Um, I see I have one of my characters consumed selected, right? You can drop down. So if I just want to add that additional 25, Right, I can click 25, hit enter, and confirm. So displaces new balance will be 6,000, and consumed is going to go down to 2,610. I can just hit confirm, and there you go. Now I got it. It's instant. Now most currency has a one-to-one -one conversion rate, meaning if you transfer 500 time warp badges, the other character loses the 500 and the character you're on gains the 500. However, some currency has a conversion rate. So if you're transferring currency with a conversion cost, it will actually let you know how much will be lost due to the transfer. 
So if we take a look down here at something like Solash, as you can see, it says amount lost in transfer, 17%, right? So if we actually go to transfer this, and uh, let's just say we're gonna transfer 300, hit enter. Right here, you get this little information bubble. And it says 60 currency will be lost in the transfer. So again, not all currency will be transferable. And there is a Wowhead page that has a Warbound currency guide that I'll link to in the description below for more information on how that works. The dragon riding system that became popular in Dragonflight and became available to other zones later on in the expansion is being extended upon for the War Within. And it is now being renamed Sky Riding. This is because all of your old mounts, or at least most of them, can be used with the dynamic flying system that was introduced in Dragonflight. The Skyriding talents are also under a new menu in the mount window, and have been trimmed down from 20 Dragon Riding talents to 11 Skyriding talents. And although there are new Skyriding glyphs in the new zone, it looks like your proficiency tokens are not tied to the glyphs anymore. The tooltip states you will gain extra skywriting proficiency as you level up. This is more likely because they don't want you to have to go to the Dragon Isles in order to level up your skywriting. Which does beg the question, what are the new glyphs for? You'll also be able to switch between skywriting and steady flight styles, where steady flight is the old traditional way of flying. There's a new menu item that says switch flight styles. And right now I'm on I'm on sky riding. So if I switch this, I will go to steady riding and all of the mounts change. Even the original dragon riding mounts now follow the old fashioned way of flying. When the war within launches, you're going to actually need to be able to complete the war within pathfinder in order to unlock steady flight in the new zones. Another huge change is all of the class changes. There are simply too many changes to discuss in this video because a lot of the talent trees have been redesigned. So taking a look at the updated talent trees, figuring out your builds and testing things out is going to be super important before the expansion releases. The good thing with the current talent tree is that they only go up to level 70. So once you get a good build, you're not going to have to worry about changing it when the expansion releases. There is also the hero talents. These are the new talents that you can learn from level 71 to 80. So as you can see, these are not available for you to pick up during the pre-patch. So I do want to dive further into this, but like I said above, this will have to be separate videos. There's just too many changes for each class. There is a new limited time event called the Radiant Echoes. This is the pre-expansion event and as a bonus allows you to do a gear catch up for any of your alts that were, like mine, left behind in Dragonflight. So this event goes from July 30th to August 26th, and like other pre-expansion events, it's an open world event. This event has its own currency called Radiant Memories that you can earn and spend on some limited time items, including gear, a 32 slot bag, a 30 slot reagent bag, mounts, pets, and an heirloom ring. So when the event becomes active, your level 70 character will receive a quest to head to Dalaran and into the portal room to start the event. This event occurs in stages and will cycle between three different zones with the event leading up to a quest to defeat a legendary boss from previous expansions. So you're going to have a chance to defeat the Lich King, Anixia, or Ragnaros. With the pre-expansion event, Dragonflight raids are now going to be awakened, meaning they are now empowered and add more difficulty to each of the bosses, as well as better loot. Looks like there's two new pieces of currency being added to awakened raids, which can be used to purchase weapons and gear. So you can get an antique bronze bullion, 
by defeating awakened bosses, which can be used to purchase weapons, trinkets, and cosmetic items from all of the Dragonflight raids. The second currency you can get is Awakened Tempo Stone, which will drop off the end raid boss of the Awakened Raid. And these can be used to purchase Dragonflight Season 4 tier sets. And if you complete all three Awakened Raids on normal or higher difficulty, you're going to be able to get a Voyaging Wilderling Mount. If that is an amount mouthful, I don't know what it is. But it looks like a pretty cool mount, so I'm pretty excited to see that. So there was a lot of stuff that we went over, and I'm sure that there's going to be some tweaks and additions along the way up until the War Within actually launches. So I'll be updating you all as I go along. Let me know what you think about the pre-patch event in the comments below, and I will see you in Azeroth.